Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another spoiler discussion. We are, Today we are talking a little more in depth on the things that didn't work for me with IT Chapter 2, uh, the movie. So if you have not seen the movie, I highly suggest that you click away from this. Maybe go check out my uh, review. My review of the movie, which I'll leave down there in the doobly-doo, does have a spoiler section there at the end, but there was a lot of stuff that I missed talking about, um, some stuff that was brought up afterward that I had a problem with, basically some reminders of things that I had issues with, and I just want to go over those things, not really for posterity, but just to have them documented here on the channel. Uh, right off the bat, one of the things I forgot to mention is there, there's an overall malicious feel to almost you know, the picking on or the trolling of Stephen King in this movie. And while I understand he was he he was there for it, you know, he, he saw the movie, he gave his okay for the movie, all the picking on him about how, uh, well, they use Bill as an example, which is kind of funny. In the book, I believe Bill is more based on Peter Straub because he's balding, um, yeah, he has a stutter, Straub was balding, had a stutter. I think he was more based on Peter Straub, if you're going to base him on anybody. He wasn't really based on King. King wasn't basing him on himself, I don't feel. Um, but the, them harping on the fact that, you know, Bill can't write a decent ending, which also kind of bothered me because they go on and on about this. It's a joke all throughout the movie, and then they use Stephen King's ending. Um, as far as the giant spider kind of deal, and as as far as I'm concerned, if anybody has problems with the book's ending, that would be the thing that they had a problem with. Most people that I speak to don't really have a problem with the ending other than, what are you trying to say, it's just a giant spider. Now, of course, anybody who pays attention knows that it, the entity known as it, the entity that has control of Pennywise, that is Pennywise, is not a giant spider. Um, that is just the the image that he is stuck in. And at some point in time in the movie, they tried to do this. They tried to get that point across, uh, especially with the ritual of Chud. We'll get to that in just a second. Chud, whatever. Um, where if they, they talk about, you know, all beings must be trapped in a form, or whatever the quote is. I don't know, but uh, Mike says it two or three times, uh, and he gets it from the Native Americans in uh, during the, the ritual of Chud. Now, as far as that's concerned, I, I didn't like the fact, like I said, it went on way, way too long and it started to feel a bit malicious, especially since I'm one of the few people, I guess, that actually like the ending of the book. Uh, mainly, probably because I actually understood what King was getting at as far as, you know, it being trapped in the form of a spider and not actually being a giant spider. Of course, Pennywise, It, whatever you want to call it, uh, the entity known as It, um, it is all about fear, and I know one of my biggest real-life fears is spiders. So it makes sense that he would get stuck in a form like that, just like pretty much he gets stuck in the form of the clown. That's just a, kind of like a uh, an all-around, you know, just childhood fear kind of thing. Now, going on to the ritual of Chud, Chud, Chowd, whatever the hell you want to call it, the that ending the the way they changed it to where Mike had basically betrayed them to make them believe to get them down there so that they could they could believe but I I did not buy that at all uh it was a very I, other, other than the fact that yes the entire thing with the native american ritual is goofy as shit um it of course it doesn't work in the movie and I think that's one of the things that Machete was going after was look it it didn't. It didn't actually work to kill him, you know. So uh, even though I don't know that there's any, I, I know there's several Native American uh, twi Twitter accounts that are that are very hot about this, wanting to cancel the whole film, kind of deal, because of this section. Uh, it was stupid. Um, was it malicious on their part? I don't think so. It's a, because it doesn't work. It's not like they're saying that you know this thing does work because it didn't work in the movie at all whatsoever. And in the book, it's pretty much reduced to just these kids basically s smoking themselves out and having a hallucination down there um, in, in the pit. And then they see the turtle coming, all, all that, not the turtle, but they, they see the turtle and they see, you know, how it got here, that kind of thing. Um, the, the, whole, the whole bit with him scratching off one side, why did nobody notice? And I hate to turn into CinemaSins here, everything wrong with It Chapter 2, but... 
nobody noticed that there was a whole side that was scratched off like each side of that thing was important but yet you had this one side that was scratched off and nobody thought to ask um the scene where uh bill and mike are well when mike's first showing bill about the ritual which should and he he spikes his drink or whatever that is one of the most horribly acted scenes i have i've seen in a movie theater that was like dvd direct to dvd quality bad that was like it the it that was like this version of it bad it was it, it was hilariously awful um even what's his name uh McAvoy whatever the hell his name James McAvoy he did a horrible job in that scene the actor who played Mike I think did a terrible job also he was way over the top um in fact one one commenter said they couldn't understand him half the time and I think that's actually right uh and there's another scene because he's just talking so fast. He's just going through all these things so fast and he's stumbling all over his words. It's funny because Mike was stuttering more than Bill was at one point in time. It almost felt like Mike was like making fun of him or mimicking him, which was very odd. Uh, there's some really bad ADR in the movie uh, after uh, you know, them shooting or not shooting but recording audio after the fact. And there's one scene where they're outside a uh, Jade Palace or whatever it is, uh, the, the Chinese restaurant, where Richie is talking. And he's got his hands up like this. And it's he's kind of in like the this side of, of the screen. Just reverse it when you're watching this. But he's, he's over on the far left-hand side of the screen. Someone else is standing by him. You can tell his mouth isn't moving, but yet he's talking. And he's just kind of standing there going like that. And th there's voiceover. Uh, kind of dubbed on top of it. Um, that bothered me. The absolutely terrible CGI that they did on Finn Wolfhard to make him look young, um, make him look like he did in the first film, was atrocious. There were several times I was like, that looks bad. Like, his his eyeglasses were just floating on his face. It looked so rushed and overdone. Nowhere near as good as, like, let's say a Marvel movie with uh, Samuel Jackson or... Uh, Kurt Russell, you know, what they did with them to, to de-age them, um, or even Stan, Stan Lee at one point in time, I can't remember which movie that it was, was it Captain Marvel, can't remember, but uh, what they did with uh, Finn Wolfhard uh, or uh, Richie in the movie looked absolutely terrible. Um, one, one thing that I've said over and over again, I've said it on Twitter, I'm going to say it here again, is Bill Hader is the best part of this movie. It, and that's probably because he's he the only character that got any character development. Um, they tried a little bit with Bet with Bill, um, and we're gonna get to that in a second. I'm trying to keep my thoughts in order here. They tried to give Bill some more, uh, but let's talk about Richie for a second. So Richie, there is a subtext that Richie was in love with Eddie. I love that change. One of the best changes they had because for the for the longest time I thought Eddie was gay. Um, as far as his character in the in the book and and even his character in the uh, 1990 mini miniseries had that had that quality and I was always rooting for them to tackle that a little bit more and for them to flip it and make it Richie and that's why you know Richie and Eddie were always constantly arguing um, not that they were a couple at any point in time not that Eddie even reciprocated the feelings but to have Richie be in love with Eddie made so much sense for that movie, and that's one of the, that's one of the best changes that I feel that you know they, that Machete got across was that character development. It made the character of Richie that much deeper. He's one of my favorite characters, period. Um, and just him getting that depth, I appreciated that so much. And the scene where he goes back to finish carving that, I, I got a little teary eyed. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It it felt. It felt real. It didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like some, you know, SJW propaganda, you know, try to stuff all the, you know, try to stuff more of the homosexual agenda in there with some of the other stuff that I've seen people say. It, some of the other stupidity, if we're honest. Um, I, I liked it. It felt natural. It felt great. And that was one of the big positives. That and the opening scene with Adrian Mellon. Uh, they, they nailed these aspects. They did a lot of things really, really good, but of course they did some things that were really, really bad and made some awful decisions that still have me on the fence about the movie. I do hope that we get this supercut. Um, I would love to see the supercut uh, of the like six plus hour version because this movie was originally four hours 
and Muschietti had to cut it back to 2 hours and 49 minutes. We are missing an hour and 11 minutes of this film, and I would love to see what all is in there, and I'm hoping it's more the backstory and more the character development for the other characters. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is the utterly ridiculous twist for Bill's character. Um, at one point in time, there toward the end, Bill is having to deal with... Um, I'm going to end on a positive note also. We're going to talk about something else that I absolutely loved. Um, but with the whole thing with Bill confessing that he wasn't actually sick the day that Georgie died, that he faked sick because he didn't want to go, up, go out and play with his, other his younger brother, was ridiculous. Uh, I hated everything about it. It's a stupid, unnecessary change. And I, I have no idea why they did it. Um, Bill, Ma James, sorry, James McAvoy during that scene, horrible acting. Um, in fact, he's one of the worst parts of the movie as far as acting is concerned. Um, most of his stuff is like overacting, and most of his scenes feel just kind of tacked on, especially the scene at the carnival where he's trying to save the kid. Um, it was so natural that Bill would want to kill this thing for killing his brother. Um, and that was just it. You know, he was sick, he couldn't go out, he couldn't be there. And that guilt would have haunted him. But to add this stupid, uh, I faked sick and that's what that's why Georgie died, it just, I mean, that's something to actually beat yourself up over. That actually makes you a douchebag. And Bill, to me, wasn't that kind of character. Um, and if people can say, oh, no, well, it, you know, some people just don't want to play with their siblings and that's okay. No, that made him an asshole. If he didn't want to go out and play, the only reason he faked sick was to not play with his brother. In my opinion, that makes him an asshole, and that kind of kills that character for me. Um, that's my opinion, of course. Uh, I, I thought that that whole scene right there damn near ruined the movie for me. Uh, that added on to, like I talked about in the last video, the Mrs. Curse uh, sequence. Those two parts really, really bothered me, um, even more so than the stupid ritual Judd, that, that kind of thing. It, it, so much more, it was Bill's forced twist storyline that was absolutely ridiculous. I didn't like anything about it. Um, if you liked it, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, just don't be rude about it. Uh, I don't I don't understand why they had to change it. If you thought it deepened the character any, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. We'll try to have a discussion about this, but I think, like I've said, probably for the 17th time now, it was ridiculous. To end on a good note, one of the best scenes in this entire movie is Ben in well Ben and Beverly when Beverly's stuck in the stall, the bathroom stall, and Ben is stuck in the dirt in the clubhouse. That scene is absolutely amazing. I love that scene. I love when the door fi she finally gets the door open. I love all the all the you know the brief glimpses that she gets of people and of course even the here's Johnny thing was. Even though I don't like the Kubrick, The Shining, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but that whole sequence with her try fighting in the blood and in the stall and everything, and finally getting it open, that scene that shot where she's reaching down and he's reaching up, amazing. Um, it's probably the best shot scene in the entire movie, I feel. Um, but th that sequence, that whole thing with them fighting to get to each other and fighting their past at the same time, and them ending up together on the boat at the end, I thought that was great. That was a, some kind, some attempt at character development, getting these two together, and I thought that was very, not realistic, but uh, it was a very good choice for Machete. Um, and I feel like I'm saying his... his name wrong over and over again, but I believe it's Andy Machete, right? Um, I know it sounds like I'm saying mach machete, like a, you know, the knife sword thing that you use to chop through a jungle, but um, Andy Machete, I I feel like he he intended, he, he, he had good intentions, he just failed this time. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I, why I want to see the supercut so badly, is because Given more time to hash out some of these characters, there, I, I'm sure he's not going to change anything about the Bill uh, sequence, Bill's uh, f Bill faking being sick. I don't think he's going to change anything about that. But I would like to see more of the development that he had to cut and more of the scenes that he had to cut. He said he's even going to shoot more scenes to tie the two films together, and that would be awesome. In fact, if he went back and kind of shuffled them together, uh, and put and just com made a completely new film and sh to where it bounces back and forth like it did in the book. 
I think that could help tremendously. Um, that and getting rid of the mic betrayal. He's not going to do this, but getting rid of the mic betrayal and get rid of, getting rid of uh, Bill's guilt over faking sickness. Those two things I think would fix this film. Uh, I would even be able to ignore the Mrs. Kirsch sequence if he made those changes. But what did you think about the stuff that I specifically talk about in this spoiler discussion? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, if you've made it this far, I don't have to tell you. There's going to be spoilers in the discussion area. Um, so, it, I just if you disagree with me, like I've said before so many, so many times, even if you're new to the channel, I say this all the time. If you disagree with me, I'm completely fine with that. I want to have a discussion with you. Just don't be rude about it. But leave all your comments down there in the doobly-doo. If there's something that I missed that you'd like to talk about, of course, bring it up. I'd love to talk to you about it. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been It Chapter 2 Spoiler Discussion. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.